Today on Parker's Reefs, we're going to meet Michael Dalzell of Dazzling Frags as he walks us through his main display and frag tank system. Hi all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. Today we're getting a special tour of uh, Michael Dalzell's system, his frag tank and his uh, soon to be new system and uh, he's also just launched a uh, website called Dazzling Frags and uh, it's going to take us through a bit of a story of his reefing journey and what's led him to where we are today. Cool. Okay well we started off probably about eight years ago. Um, I had a very basic softy tank. Um, it was going well but that was back in the days where you only had to dose um, iodine, strontium, and calcium. You, and you were dosing all... like those level of trace elements eight years ago. Well, it's probably, it probably longer than that actually. Yeah, right. Um, you were hardcore. But it was only a certain amount. Yeah. Like there, there's no no measuring. YCP or anything. No, no yeah. measuring. <laughs> it's just put it in, see how it went. Um, yeah. But then ended up pulling all that apart, shut everything down for a while, and then got back into it with a little two foot. Started here. Yep. yep. Um, not this then, one, but in this not position. Not this one. Yeah. <laughs> Out through that. Got the frag tank. Then the four foot came in. This is just a cheap uh, six hundred dollar freshwater system that I drilled a couple of holes in the back of. Yeah, There's no fancy overflows or nothing. Um, it's a good testament to show you don't need. Yeah, you don't need a lot of fancy stuff all the time. I mean, I wouldn't build another tank like. Yep. Yeah. Fair um, but. It was doesn't, at the time. doesn't make or break the success of no, your tank. This, no, you know, I've had any struggles with it, but you know. To show that, yeah, yeah you can there. freshwater tank with a um, yeah. self drilled yeah, overflow. Yeah, two drilled holes, you know. It can work just fine. It can work. Um, so, yeah, then moved into softies, just getting it all going, and then, you know, as things go on, you get more and more stuff. Basically, <laughs> the addiction takes hold. Sorry? The addiction takes hold. That's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then struggled with it to no end, basically, until I set up that and took some fish out. Yeah, okay. And then everything just went vroom. And it's yeah, right. working really well now. So you just um, felt like you were just sort of over the tipping point for the tank? Just, just too many fish yeah, yeah. to volume, especially when you've got two, two systems running. Sure. You, you need if, to have your tangs in here to keep your algae down, and you also right. need to have your tangs in here, so you end up with twice as many fish. Yeah, and these are plums together on the same Yeah, they're the same system. system. Yeah, yeah. So normally in this system, you'd have like one bristle tooth sort of tank. Sure. Um, that would keep your algae down, whereas I've found two. Yeah, um, yeah, okay. Things like that that add to nutrients, which basically yep. struggle. The way I set up my sump, not ideal either. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, when you're learning, it doesn't, it doesn't always go, you don't always set it up the best you can. So there's basically a whole heap of baffles that just run up and down and all those, it's artificial live rock that you used to get from down the coast. I think it's just crushed oysters and stuff that they glued together. The yeah, right. Um, so I found a heap of that on, online and grabbed yep, it all. Yep. It's obviously, it's obviously working all right. It's I mean, working now, but yeah, colours if you take when I go to popping. pull that down, I <laughs> imagine there's going to be like cloudy water everywhere. But yeah, yeah. At the moment, it's all going good. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Tell us about some of the pieces you got in here. You got some um, stunning coral, some pretty cool fish too. Well. <laughs> Tell us about this fireworks colony. This here. fireworks colony I've had for a couple of years. Yep. Yep. Um, have actually almost lost it, had it grow back. You can see in the middle there, there's the old growth that's got a yellow tinge to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the new growth is all around the outside. Yeah. Um, there has actually been two occasions where it's actually started to die off. I've gone, oh, oh no. Frag, frag, frag. Yep. Got them out, got them into the light, and then it all sort of comes good again. Okay. So, it's just like keeps going, yeah, yeah. Toughens it up. And uh, this piece here, we just created a storm this weekend at uh, yeah, Fragstock, Queensland. It's yep. a um, beautiful uh, pink and green and white polyp. It's a, I don't know, do you have a name for it? We don't have a name for it. We don't have a name for it. It's like our ultra um, 
a I strawberry just, shortcake that's not a strawberry I shortcake. I sort of thought it looks a little bit like Maleficent. There's okay. an American yeah, yeah, yeah. Maleficent, if you Google that. Um, you like that? It, a little bit, some photos look a little bit, then some photos sure. don't, but you don't know what's been edited with some of those photos. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, well, I've taken some photos of the frame myself, so I'll do my editing and um, I'll add that to the video. And yeah. People can make their decision themselves yeah. what they think of it. But um, yeah, I was as soon as I saw you setting up at uh, Frame Stock last night and I saw that, I'm like, yeah, keep one aside for me yeah, because I haven't yeah. seen anything like it. The colours are uh, off the no, charts. No, no, different. Yeah, really nice. So um, yeah, that's a good piece. What about, um, you got some Montefiore Confuser in here. Uh, yep. You've got some wicked growth pattern on that. It almost looks like it's flowing that's down from a valley or something. It's just... That's growing like that because it was shaded from the Dallas above. Yes. As it got shaded, it would grow sort of differently. And then I've cut that back and now it's being allowed to grow again. That it's flowing. So out. it's just, and I've fragged it a few times yeah, and yeah. cut a few bits off it. No, it looks um, great. So yeah. You've got a few, no, no shortage of uh, some nice ricks and you've got a nice scully. Yep. Uh, this um, forest fire aerodactylus is uh, one of the brightest I've ever seen. Yeah, that's looking good. It's, um, it's absolutely singing. Um, and then, I mean, well, there's probably about 300 other pieces in there we could talk about, but tell us about your frag tank. Well, this is just my frag tank. <laughs> <laughs> tell us about yeah, how, how the system runs, runs on. Runs down into a refrigerator under here. Yes. And then goes back into the main the main sump under the tank, um, the radio on it, uh, guy at the back, circulate a bit of flow. Yep, yep. Um, um, Tell us yeah. about your um, frag plugs that you, you, you printed, or well, yeah, they're not frag plugs, sorry, they're, they're the frag wraps. printed things, they're great for Monty, they allow the Monty to actually grow out off the plug, yeah, whereas nice. you have them on a rack and they all want to tend to attached to the rack yeah you so then you end up breaking it. them off whereas in here they will grow I'll get this one out you can see how it will yeah, actually it grow out, out off the off yeah, the plug yeah, yeah. yeah you're never going to get that on a on a rack no yeah. no so you get a lot nicer growth pattern yeah nice and you're just 3 3d printing them yourself from yeah, the, just the, the trusty Aldi, Aldi cocoon yeah, yeah. Good just unit. basic PLA and then uh, um, you've yeah, used your like yes, 3D printer, I'm sure, on lots of other things, but yep. also on your uh, clip-on refugium light here. Yep. Yeah, wicked little setup there. And you so that's just a basic Bunnings um, hardware light. And it's Seven dollar light. Yeah. Pumping out Growing the um, keto growth. Yeah, yep. yeah, wicked. And you got no shortage of dosing. Is this the dosing for? Oh, I mean, they combined some time. Assuming like yeah, the whole lot. So yep. yeah, yeah, all runs off here. Um, I'm dosing the coral essential stuff. Yeah, like cool. Label. Yeah. Um, on the juice. Yeah, on the juice. Yep. Their aminos, their vitamins. Um, some of their iron just to top up the levels. Most sure. of it comes through the Red Sea stuff that I've got tucked in here. It goes yes. through this doser. Sure. Um, yeah. That's what we've got here. So awesome. Just add a little bit more to certain things. Nice. Well, that's sort of a good background on where you've come from with reefing and where you are now. But uh, just over here to my left is where we're sort of headed next. That's going to be the next project. The, the yes, next that's project. we're moving to. Tell us about this tank. So, this tank's Denison built. Um, nice and big, nice Starfire front on it. So this um, is a... She's all... Eight? Looks horrible at the moment with all the algae. Make sure you get that Sayano in there. <laughs> I don't think it's a good job. I mean, tanks. I know, it's, it's you don't, a bit you have to start up a tank in a weekend no, to look right, like that. Right. You've got, you got to get through these phases. That's true. And, um, and, um, I mean, you've it, proven the concept with this tank that you could, you're obviously a well accomplished reefer. Yeah, well, with frag stock yesterday, um, it's still quite a big effort to do a water change and everything on this. I've got yeah, to run yeah. hoses out and run drains out and uh, pump it all back in. So it's been a little bit neglected, and unless the coral started deteriorating, I'll probably push my water change schedule out a little bit, but sure. and obviously that's caused all that. It's not always that bad, but the longer the you know ugly patch, the better the tank in the end. Is I that think. right? Yeah, yeah. People who rush through the ugly patch yeah. only end up with well, short-lived success. This so. tank's about eight months old now, so okay. um, it's putting in the hard it's, yards. It's taken a long time to get going, especially with the quarantining and yeah. Tell us about your quarantine process. So basically. We have the reefer, Red Sea Reefer there, a very basic setup. It's just going to be holding the coral for three months. Yes, yeah, so every coral you get is going to go into a tank that's fish free. It's going to yep. be in there for 90 days yep. just to ensure there's no white spot attached to the coral because yep. if there's no host, it's not going to, if you give it 90 days without a host, it can't survive. Yep. So then you can't introduce a white spot into your tank. 
theoretically, yes. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. So, and then that allows us to have things like uh, powder, powder browns and powder blues in the same tank. Yep. When I first put the powder blue in here, he got bailed up behind these rocks and sure. was not allowed out. Um, I'm, I'm sure if it wasn't for the tank transfer method and there was a white spot in there, he would have got it for sure and he wouldn't have went through the through that initial period and then you know took him a few weeks and he started coming out uh, started fighting back with powder brown and <laughs> yeah, right. eventually they That's sorted out their differences and they're all happy now yeah it's interesting so. thing what can you tell us about your like equipment you're running radians on your yeah, main your radions tank. through everything radions on uh, here yep yep i do like the radions basically i like stuff that you know works yep um, I know there's a lot of other mods out there that are very good, but when you put a radio on the chain, yeah, you, eliminate, the yeah. you eliminate a whole lot of issues. You know straight away if your coral's under that light, it could it be too high, yes, but apart from that, there's nothing that that light yeah. um, can't grow or can't it's a make concept. look good. So it eliminates the whole lighting issue. The only yeah. other two issues are your flow or your water quality. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So it makes it, to eliminate something completely, is actually yeah. quite handy in this in a, hobby. In a hobby with a million variables, mm. if you can knock yeah. one out, it's always a, always a win. So that's yeah. cool. Tell us about your um, uh, water change setup with the scanner pumps over there. Okay. You've got a um, pretty cool setup going on here just to make maintenance of this, these tanks easier. This is actually, I, I want to set up the same system over there. I just haven't got around to it yet. Um, so it's basically just two Stenner dosing pumps. They have a knob on them, so I just monitor my salinity and can adjust it up or down accordingly as salinity goes up or down. Yep, yep. Um, it's also handy the drain comes out open here. Okay. Don't mind the mess, but when I'm, when I'm fragging, <laughs> oh, um, you've got a I've got water. the drain that comes out here. It's not a lot, but I can sit a bucket under there and yep. it'll just trickle in enough to keep the water warm or yep, yep. keep fresh water going through when yeah, I'm fragging. It's good so, so is that a continual or, or you've got switching so that it turns I just on have it on a timer. Yep. So it's, this is it here actually, it's been disconnected. So as what I used to do is as my nitrate or phosphate levels would rise, I'd just push down more tabs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just um, in more water just, It just changes yeah. more water and yeah. as it got better and better, I just drop them off. And back out. Um, it's perfect. It's very simple, very easy to monitor. Um, as long as you keep an eye on your salinity, there's not a whole lot that can go wrong. That's really. right. No. You know me, I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, yeah it makes life and so and much easier. And that was a turning point for the tank as well. Yeah, from yeah. struggling continuously to just it just yeah, yeah. doing stuff. Even when you do like a chemi clean, you used to get a bit of cyanide here and there. Yes. You chuck it in, you don't even worry about doing the water change yeah, after yeah. two days, you Clean just it let up. it run its cycle. And, and oh, the big thing I like about automatic water change, I mean, you've got a young family as well, I had a chance to meet your um, cool boys before. I, I got a young daughter as well, and life is life. It mm. doesn't always go to plan, they, and sometimes. They come first. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Sometimes the reef tank doesn't always get top yeah. priority, so sometimes the water change can slip out. But yeah. if you've got something taking care of that for you, if you're doing makes it easy. water changes, most problems in your tank are going to be taken care That's of. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a wonderful safety blanket. Yeah. So no, you've got it pretty well set up. And um, cheers. Thanks for showing us through the system. No worries. Cheers, man. All right, so uh, Michael was a little bit shy about announcing on video that he's uh, just launched this brand new website and also a Facebook page page called Dazzling Frags. And he's got the full range from his uh, frag tank available on there, including all of those incredible Zoas, that Australian Maleficent uh, Acro. Although it's mentioned sold out there, he does have a couple more pieces cooking away there. So um, be sure to jump on his page, check it out, see what he's got available and um, yeah, be rest assured that uh, these items get shipped perfectly because he showed me uh, some of the uh, techniques he's got and uh, they are raising the bar so um sit back enjoy and i'll uh, run you through some of the dslr picks i took from his frag tank because um there's some crazy pieces in there thanks for watching guys and um yeah thanks again to uh, michael for uh, letting me into his house uh, sharing a beer and um, telling us his story thanks again guys oh one more thing don't forget to like the video, comment below if you've got any questions, and of course hit that subscribe button. Make sure you'll see the rest of my Queensland tour. Thanks guys, bye.